Alright guys, this will be a real good video guys. I'm going to teach you how to apply, so how to utilize non-duality, aka Infinity Flame was my original teacher of non-duality, aka my turn teacher of non-duality, and now it's a godism. So first of this video is going to walk you through the process of, of going from, pretty much the most general guys are like anywhere from 5 to 10% max god realized, and any woman in general that doesn't study spiritual non-duality, is anywhere from 10 to maybe 20% of god realized. So pretty much, get twenty most like 90, 90, 90 percent of the human population aren't are less than twenty five percent got realized. The only people who are twenty five percent to to thirty to uh, to thirty percent above got realized are hoes, pimps, gangbangers, drug dealers, gangsters, cartel members, and mobsters and mafia members. Pretty much criminals, pretty much. And I guess also. Um, people that make people that make over two hundred fifty thousand years above to millionaires and millionaires. So if you're not one of those, and you're like a regular normal square, or whatever. Then now you're not over twenty five percent to thirty percent got realized. Okay, pretty much means to, to even go to, to decide to join a gang or to start pimping, you automatically go from twenty to twenty to twenty five percent got realized to so thirty percent. Then you pass to thirty percent. Like so just to join a gang. When you make the decision to join a gang and go and you go to fight and then you get jumped in, you're on Mac already like at thirty four hundred percent got realized. Just for making that decision to join that organization and to start being a gangster rubbing in the streets. And pretty much people that are in the streets all the time are way more got realized than people that stay home all the time. And the reason for that is because when you're in the streets all the time, you're pretty much in nature, you're outside, you're in the air, you're just in the sky, you're using trees, nature and all that, and you're getting ism just from being outside in the streets and breathing that nice fresh good air. There's more healthy to breathe fresh good air than to be breathing air from an apartment or a home or a condo or whatever. If you're in your house all the time, yeah, you're not going to be 30% out of realized and talk to the best of the nightmare. But people are in the streets all the time and homeless as well. They're over 30% out of realized because they're always in the streets so much constantly and they're hustling and they're finding ways to make money and get full or whatever that they all might get over 30% out of realized and they start feeling the benefits of enlightenment. So, some people are already feeling the benefits of enlightenment a little bit, but pretty much this video is going to take that to the next level. So, here we go, guys. Here right now, guys. We're going to start, guys. Here we go, guys. I'm about to guys. Here we go. Your mouth for the man, oh my god, so late. So, make this video into two parts. First, it'll be quickly explaining Gazdom and how you have Gazdom. Then, I'm gonna talk about briefly about why it's more crap. So, right, guys, so real quick, it's gonna be fast, guys. Pretty much, on how to utilize like Gazdom and become, start feeling the best of enlightenment, you have to do this. Let's say you're depressed right now, you hate yourself. You have to write uh, pretty much two paragraphs. The first paragraph, you write about everything you hate about yourself, your depression and shit. So if I write at least four, three or four sentences, the first sentence is talk about why you hate yourself. The second sentence is about everything that's wrong with you. The third sentence is about why you're depressed. The fourth sentence is about um, why you don't feel like you enjoy life. Right, so you write that. And then you write another second paragraph, short, three sentences. You first you write, if I wasn't depressed and hate myself, my life would be blank. Second sentence, if I was happy and positive, I would do blank. The third sentence is, if I was over, if I was 30, 30 to 500% God realized, I will, I will feel blank, and I will do blank, and my life will feel like blank. And even one last sentence, we were in a relationship, if I was positive, happy, once I love myself, I will go for a girl that looks like blank, that personality is like blank, and her vibe is like blank, and I will feel, and I will love her in, in this blank way. And I will feel about her in this blank way, and I will treat her this blank way. So that's pretty much a part of it, guys. Mostly you're depressed and you have social anxiety and you have massive, uh, massive anxiety and you have massive depression or you depression and you hate yourself. You have pretty much you're probably a virgin or you only really have sex one of the most twice in your life and you don't know how to talk to girls or get girls to have sex or be your friend or you don't really know how to make friends with girls or guys and etc. So mostly you're reading hate forever because you probably have no friends or, or maybe less than three friends and maybe they're not best friends or anything, maybe they're acquaintances or regular friends, but you have no best friend. You've either never been in a relationship or you don't have a girlfriend. 
or you don't have a female friend or a friend with benefits, and you probably really want sex, and you probably really want a real love that bonds a connection relationship. That's probably the reason why you're depressed. So yeah, guys, that's the reason. You write those two essays, you read that every day for a week, and after we reading that every day, you write a third two, two more times saying, okay, I read this for a week, and now I feel blank. And then you say, okay, if I, feel, if I, if I was to be given the best of enlightenment, I would do blank. I would feel blank, I would express blank, and I would live like blank. So that's another two, two or three paragraphs, you write that. So after that, write original sentences, then from there you have to go outside, and you have to spend at least an hour, and two hours every day outside. You don't have to do anything. You literally just go to a local park and you sit in the bench and you'll be on your phone, texting people on your phone, going on dating apps, going on regular apps, whatever, and whatnot. And um, yeah, you'll be good. So pretty much like that. I tell you, that's pretty much how you become over 30% out really. Everybody writing yourself and expressing yourself. Expressing your true honest, your true honest, your honest love. Because even if you hate yourself, but even with the first paragraph you said about everything you hate about yourself and shit, that's still honest love. Because basically, love is everything. So whether you love yourself or hate yourself, that's just two different expressions and versions of love. They're two, they're two sides of the same coin of love. Where you hate yourself or love yourself. So pretty much, you have to write about why you hate yourself. Then you write about what you do or you love yourself. Then you write about what you do if you are enlightened. You are over 30% enlightened. When you feel a bunch of enlightenment. So yeah, guys, pretty much one way to become 30% enlightened just by journaling. Another way is just by going outside and you start really having random conversations with people, whether guys or girls, no matter. You have to write random conversations. So let's say you're in a conversation. You say like this. Uh, hey, ma'am, I just saw you. I want to tell you that I think you're really beautiful and you're amazing. And I'm sort of an empath. It's, it's, it's a spiritual and psychic. I can sense energy. I can tell without a doubt that you have really good, positive, loving energy. And I really feel your vibe. And I like your vibe. I just wonder if I could just talk to you for a few minutes to be honest. I'm really nervous. I have some anxiety. I'm actually anxious because I've never done this before. I just want to see if I could talk to you for a little bit, ask you a few questions, or just talk to you. We could vibe for a bit. You say something like that, make it short, make it more unique, something like that. And there's a good 85% chance that. A girl will still actually give you some of her time to talk to you. Especially if you be, if you be real with her and tell her that you have massive anxiety, massive social anxiety, and then you're depressed. Because if a girl see a guy that's honest about themselves, agreeable with themselves, and you actually have the boss to talk about your, your, your life like that, the girl will like you for that, and she'll like your energy for that, and she'll actually try to see if she can help you. And from there, you will talk for five minutes. Then you probably, you're most likely you're a person like that. You tell a girl that you're depressed, have massive social anxiety, have anxiety, massive depression, and that you're nervous and scared about talking right now. And you actually express your real self with me on for five minutes. She has an 85% chance that she will either give you her Snapchat or her Instagram or her Facebook or even her number. And then she'll become one of your social support. And she'll be her, not social support, my your, um, support her, and she'll and you start talking to you every day, trying to make you go from a, not, from a negative person to a positive person. And she really want to change your life and make you better. So if you do that, you'll probably go from 30, from 25, 20% you realize, to 50% you now, 50 to 60% you realize, and you'll be feeling the best of enlightenment. Once you finish that conversation with the first girl you talk to, you get the number, or Snapchat, or Facebook, or Instagram, or whatever a few things she uses, and you'll be really happy, and you start talking to her. But here's the thing, guys, you do get the girl to do that, you message her twice a day, the most. You message her once in the morning, once in the afternoon, and then once at night. Like, if you were at nighttime, you message between 9 o'clock at night, to 12 o'clock at night. After 12, or it's 12, 12, 30, you don't message her. If she doesn't reply, you wait two days. You don't reply the second day. First day. You want the first day to do your thing and hang out, then you want the second day. After two, after 48 hours pass, like she doesn't reply to you, and the third day, you message her five times. You say, hey, um, no, I mean, I'm sorry if you're busy. I just don't have any response to me. I just want to know we get to talk for a little bit. You're on text on the phone. You're just, whatever you're comfortable with, you're just fine. You suck that, then the second text you say, hey, I'm really missing you. I am mean, thinking, uh, you're, on, you're on my mind all day. I'm missing you a lot. Can you, can we, you think we could chat for a little bit if you mind? I was in the third sentence that you say, I miss you, my, I miss you, I miss you so much. Can we please talk? You're mad my crush. I really love, I really care about you a lot. I want to start a connection with you. I don't think sentences, you wait six hours. After six hours, you write this. Um, my love, I'm missing you OD. Just tell me straight up, you don't want to talk to me anymore. Uh, it's okay. I'll delete your number and everything. Just, just, just talk to me. And if it's the fifth sentence, Okay, this is the last time I'm going to message you. I'm going to tell you straight up that I'm sort of, that I low-key sort of fall in love with you when I have to give you your number. I just really want to talk to you one more time. I want to vibe with you. I want to connect with you. But if you don't want that with me, it's okay. I'm not going to text you again after this. I'm just going to text you again. So you can either tell me not to text you no more or you just want our conversation. But regardless, if you don't reply to this, I'm not going to text you no more. And if you don't reply within five days, I'm going to delete your number and I'm just want, and we'll just go our separate ways in life. Those are the five messages you send. That's pretty much how to, I mean, just love them too, but pretty much love them and God's really the same thing, pretty much. Like, God's pretty much like a more high level, advanced version of love is them. But instead of talking about this regular love, you talk about like spirituality, enlightenment, and Godization. Basically, you're trying to provide massive body to the girl and make her enlightened and make her love herself to the max. So, yeah, you fight those five sentences, right? And if you do that and you do all that, you'll go from 20% out of your guy or girl, whatever, you'll go from 10 to 20% out of your lives to about 50 to even 100% out of your lives. 
And if you do it again, you just say you do this with three more girls every day, you get a number from three other girls. For each girl you get, and you do all what I told you to so the, the two messages at first and the five, then the five messages after two days, you will get your Gary's by 30 or 50% per girl. So say you get the one girl, so you get the first girl, you were 15% Gary's last. So you get the first girl number and you send the messages. After that, they're by you even instantly apply, they're by expressing your real honest stuff, you increase your Gary'sation by 50%. So you go from 10, 20%, to 50 70 percent got realized and then the next girl you do that again everything they told you to do again you go from 60 percent got realized to 110 then the third girl you go from 110 got realized to 160. So for each girl you do this for you increase the guy's using my face percent even they'll reply to you you just get used to doing this and t- talking to girls or even guys or whatever you gay or bad or whatever or they want friends or whatever for every girl you do and you say you're straight every girl you do you increase your guy realization by 50 percent and every guy you do say you're straight you increase your guy realization by 30 percent so yeah the more you communicate and talk to people in general pretty much the more, um, the more fucking, um, got real that should be. Now, you'll never really get got realization. Basically, you could do this, but you don't have to do this. I recommend you start meditating, practicing mindfulness at first for 10 minutes a day. You meditate for 10 minutes a day, and basically, if you're a beginner, most likely, you really have to try to quiet your mind. Like, whenever you, um, start thinking something, you basically just start to stop the thought, and then you quiet your mind for a bit. In general, you're, if you're a beginner, you're really going to have about five to ten seconds of empty mind to get another thought. But the more you try to meditation, the more you practice it or anything, you will start to be able to have quiet, quiet mind for anywhere from 10 seconds to 30 seconds to even a minute. But if it's a minute, it takes about oh, a year or more. A year or even two years to meditate for 10 minutes. But when you do that, and then you do mindfulness for five minutes, but you're cycling through your, your senses every 10 seconds. So mindfulness, that's your first you focus on your sight for 10 seconds, then your hearing for 10 seconds, then your taste for 10 seconds, then your smell for 10 seconds, and then this is more important. Then you focus on your touch. You touch something, anything, for 20 seconds. Touching is the most important because maybe when you touch something, that you interacting with the actuality of reality. So where are you touching shit? You're you interacting with life at the present moment, and you'll really feel into the present moment once you touch something. Like I'm touching my stove right now, and I'm reconnecting to the present moment like crazy right now, right? So yeah. And then the last way you create that realization is you do drugs. You just start smoking weed, or doing crack, or doing magic mushrooms, or LSD. Or you really want to go crazy, do DMT. Or if I'm on your own DMT. So yeah, those six drugs right there will get you got realized um, automatically. Like your first LSD trip, you'll go from 10 to 20% got realized to about 100 to even 200% got realized. Just with your first LSD trip. I recommend you take a tab at one tab at first for your first time, especially in two or three, because that's too much. Like for me, for example, I've never done more than 2,000 LSD in my life, but I might try to do more soon. But for now, I'm going to wait. But yeah, I think I might do some LSD maybe, like, maybe tomorrow or something. Maybe I want a trip. But anyways, yeah. So that's that. So those are three ways to increase your galvanization. And now I'm going to take a, another hit of crack. I'm going to tell you briefly why I smoke crack. All right, here we go, guys. Hold on, guys. Okay, I'm going to take a hit of crack right now, and I'm going to talk briefly about why I smoke crack. All right, guys, here we go, guys. Time to blast off, guys. Here we go. That was real fucking head shit. All right, guys. The reason I'm saying not why I smoke crack. There's multiple reasons why I shoot to smoke crack, even though I go sober, so now I go back to it. So this is why I smoke crack. That's why I always be able to go back to crack. Hold up, sir. Fuck it. Hold up, wait, guys. I got to the syrup pool. Oh, I got to the syrup pool after crack. It's a bullshit. Another thing, you smoke crack, I recommend you smoke cigarettes after you take a hit, so you can feel it more. It boosts the shit out of it. The fuck? Hold up, guys. All right, wait. Hold on, guys. One sec. Alright guys, so this is pretty much why I smoke crap. I smoke crap for three or five reasons. Let's see. My first reason mainly is because it helps me make better videos and better content. Um with my YouTube channels. Like, I feel like when I don't do any drugs, I make videos. I feel like the videos, like, I'm not actually don't really be in the mood to make videos while I'm sober in general. I don't know why. I like to get a short shower, whatever. I don't even know what else to say. But I feel like when I take a hair crack and make a video, I provide literally like anywhere from 20 to 200 times more value when I take a hair crack by making videos. I feel like crack, like, I still have a point where crack went from an addiction to me 
So then after December, December 12, 2021, where I realized I was putting laying out for all the ism, talking from a need to a want, at that point, which is December 12, 2021, I've been smoking, I've been smoking like half the crack I used to smoke. Like pretty much, when I was, pretty much from November 2020 to December 2021, I was smoking a minimum 150 or 200 dollars for crack. Like let's say if I go smoke from like 8 o'clock in the morning and I smoke till like 12 or 2 o'clock in the, in, the, in the night, I will pretty much smoke at least 180 or 200 bags of crack of the day. I'm really lucky I don't pay 10 no more crack. I'm known so well in the block now, I only pay 8 for a dime. So you do 8 times 20, and whatever that is, that's pretty much the amount I used to spend a day on crack. Or you do eight times six, anywhere eight times, at least eight times 15 to eight times 20. Maybe at the absolute least eight times 12 to eight times 13. So you do eight times 12 to eight times 16 to eight times 20. And I pretty much arranged in general how I was waiting on crack from November, from November 2020 when I started to crack again until December 2021. And then from December 2021 until now, you pretty much times it by um, five. So I thought I was going next in general. I mean, I think I was talking about John, but not only about Knicks now. Right now, I got my new block of so huge Knicks. But yeah, mainly I've been spending Knicks for my boy. Um, we'll call him SX. And pretty much I've been spending to cash up. I've been making money through allegedly sex marketing or allegedly pimping. Allegedly. Maybe I'm a pimp, maybe I'm not. Or I'm allegedly a pimp, but you know, everything I say the lie, so maybe I'm a pimp, maybe I'm not. But I'm going to show my bottom in the next video. So yeah. Anyways, guys, yeah. So as you do low rounds, and that's pretty much my ways. Now, as of now, you can pretty much times five times like maybe eight or ten. So I pretty much only spend about maybe like forty to a max sixty to eighty dollars a day on crack now. Cause I'm only buying by five times, so I'm about eight or tens. So yeah, I reduce my practice by a lot. But yeah, that's the big reason. So the second reason why I smoke crack also, also pretty much is because it makes me feel like a god, it makes me feel more god realized, it makes me feel more powerful. That's the second reason. The third reason I smoke crack. It's because I got to the point where I can actually make do be productive while I smoke crack. Like I can take a hit of crack and either work on my writing or work on my YouTube page or on my Is Ink page. But Is Ink pretty much two things. For me to work on Is Ink, I gotta either work on my YouTube channel or try to focus on my employees or get employees. I actually have an employee now, which is my new girl, my new girlfriend, my ride or die, or AKA my allegedly hold by Miss Allegedly. So she's three things: she's my girlfriend, my employee, and my bomb, Mrs. Hope. She's three things. She's my world. I love the people. Yeah, sure, right now. Anyways, yeah. So yeah, I thought we might smoke crack as well, cause um, we can I can feel my I'll be playing ball my bomb much more. And the fourth reason I smoke crack is because it feels fucking amazing. And the last reason I smoke crack pretty much is because um um like I'm more I can get more work than when I'm on crack. Like when I smoke weed, I don't be in the mood to work or do anything. Like the way I smoke some weed, I hardly do anything. The most I'll do when I smoke weed is probably do some writing. And yeah, right now I'm actually working on a new book with a book I started before. With basically what this one's gonna be about mafia and magic. I think. Cause I was, I mean, I have an original book, um, which is called Cancel Codes. I already, I already wrote it twice, but I lost it twice. So I write it again now. But people about a gang that lives in the Bronx, a street gang in the Bronx that actually made a uh, headed by a magician, right? His name is Ed. All the characters, all people, all my novels, the books I'm ever gonna write, the main character is gonna be named Ed, which will be based on me, and the second main character will be called Zone, which is also based on um. He basically, they're both based on me. Like, Ed is like my dark side, which is my hate, evil side. I want to do violence. And Zone is my, pre, my crazy party, which I drug the drug side. Like, people in Zone, and so as you read, I'm sort of more like Zone now than I'm like Ed. But as people like who I used to be, and I kind of still am a little bit, like my dark side, I want violence and to kill and make money and shit. And Zone is like my party side, which is the time they fucked up and do crazy shit. So basically, my, like, basically those two main characters, Ed and Zone, pretty much are my two halves. And then from there, I have other characters' names. Some characters' names are all my books are pretty much Wazzy. And that's it. So pretty much in all my novels you see, you're gonna see Ed, Zone, and Wazzy. Wazzy should be like uh he's not he's sort of a main character, but also a side character, he's not as important as Ed and Zone. Like the main character is always gonna be Ed and Zone. Right? And for this mafia book I'm writing, pretty much Ed is like a a gang a, a, a mobster magician and it's only gonna be like this god. Like this book I'm writing called Mobster Magician, whatever I don't know what it's called yet. It's pretty much about um, people, magicians, whatever, who make contracts with gods, and pretty much they start to take over. They try to pretty much collect all the gods and take over. Like, basically, there's two magicians fighting in contract with God. Basically, what happens is they go into a, into a magic fight, either to the death or into one who's knocked out, and then once the, whoever magician wins, they get the god that the, that the magician contract with. So, pretty much at some point, Ed's gonna have it with the gods, and the gods are gonna start beefing, and they're gonna start trying to try and take over and kill each other so they can take the eye. Basically, the whole thing is once a magician is, um, 
taken over by, by a God or whatever, the God people can end up feeding into their soul and their heart and their spirit. At some point, the God can be taken over their body and the God can be within their body and living through them and basically having mad power through them. Like they become both a human and a God. That's the whole thing. But the whole thing with the magicians is the magicians are trying to find a way to keep the God under control in their lives so they don't lose control. So we have a constant control over their mind, spirit, and body between the God and the magician. I love my book, guys. I peace, guys. Peace.